Sports Network production. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, along with the coach, and welcome to this week's show as we talk about the final game of a four-game homestand, a tremendous four-game stint at Autzen Stadium for Oregon. We'll preview next week's game with the Stanford Cardinal down on the farm and have a couple of special features for you as well. We'll be joined by one of the stars of yesterday's game live in the studio a little bit later on in the program. Coach, uh, a great four-game homestand capped off by uh, maybe your best all-around game in the homestand. Your offense was balanced. The defense uh, held Arizona State to about 300 yards of total offense. Your starters did not give up a touchdown. It's hard to find anything really glaringly wrong with the effort. Well, I think that uh, the first half was a little bit uh, less efficient than I would like to have had on both sides of the ball. Certainly, we had some opportunities to stop Arizona State and get our defense off the field in the, uh, particularly in the first and second Arizona State possessions, and we allowed Arizona State to convert several third downs where we've been playing very, very good football uh, recently. Uh, but you've got to give Plummer and Arizona State some credit for that as well. Uh, but the, again, the defense stood up and made the plays they had to make to keep them out of the end zone until uh, that one uh, late touchdown that uh, Arizona State got on us. Uh, I, I've got to be pleased, again, with the job on the running game. We did give up our longest run, I think, of the year at 42 yards. Uh, but other than that, Arizona State was unable to control the line of scrimmage and run the ball. Uh, offensively, uh, we did uh, have our best offensive performance of the year, even though we played uh, many reserves m most of the fourth quarter. Uh, we didn't seem to fall off that much, so I, I've, I've got to be pleased with that. Uh, our running game uh, was uh, rediscovered again after the uh, Cal game. And uh, Danny O'Neill continues to be impressive, and the return of Kristen McLemore helped, uh, I think, our passing game. Yeah, the great balance that your offense had. Uh, you established the running game early with the Whittles touchdown, and then Danny in the third quarter really shredded Arizona State's defense. Three touchdown passes, and uh, he just had a great game. The best statistical game of the season uh, for yards passing by your team. Well, it, it was. Uh, I thought it was a, a nice performance by Danny and the uh, receivers, I think, did a good job. Uh, we had several near misses. A couple of times Danny uh, had somebody open deep and missed them, and another time he had another one open deep and dropped. Uh, but uh, Pat Johnson finally got that elusive <laughs> touchdown and made that deep catch. Uh, really happy for the young freshman receiver. It was a great atmosphere here and puts your team in a great position uh, with the way that things have shaken out. Uh, you have control of your own destiny. Well, we do, uh, I suppose, uh, but it's a tough road uh, slate ahead uh, at Stanford and at Oregon State. Uh, the race is uh, basically down to three teams, two of which play next week uh, or this Saturday in, in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I really believe that uh, if we can get uh, uh, to six and one, then things really get interesting. But until we do that, uh, you know, the race is just what it is. It's a race and it's... Uh, uh, we're in it, that's the good news, but uh, nothing to jump up and down about yet. Well, it's been fun. Uh, with the fifth conference win of the year, the Ducks assure themselves of a first division finish, and I think probably uh, no worse than fourth place in the league, but there are a little higher goals, I sense, on the team this year, so we'll talk about that later in the program. Let's get into the first quarter highlights as we get this one underway. A near-capacity crowd. Final home game for the 13 Oregon seniors. What a way to go out. They have had a great deal of success at Autzen Stadium. The opening kickoff kind of batted down by Matt Nelson, the starting tight end for Arizona State, and the Sun Devils with the first possession. In fact, this first quarter, Arizona State had the football most of the time. We did. Brian Collins and uh, Derek Allen make the tackle. A little screen pass to start the game with, and Herman O'Berry up there making a nice tackle for a loss. He was also clipped on the play, and hopefully you can see it on the replay here as he's making the tackle. Right here, he gets clipped in the back of the legs, so we get the loss plus the penalty yardage. Next down, we give it to the running back, Chris Hopkins, and he doesn't get anything. And then Jeff Sherman forcing the play back inside. Uh, Jeff uh, made a bunch of tackles, played another very good game. Uh, Rich Rule played a great football game. Uh, I really think that uh, other than one or two plays, uh, the defense had an outstanding day again. But they were able to pick up the first down and continue to drive, and they continue to try to pound it on the ground to very little success. And now Plummer, one of the few times you were able to get to him. 
And one of Rich Rule's few sacks. Mm -hmm. uh, nice job, uh, Rich Rule comes in, avoids Hopkins the back, redirects, and spins Plummer down for the lost yardage and the sack. That was a concern of yours, that Plummer's ability to scramble and move around. And he hurt us a few times. Uh, this was a fourth down play, and they barely got it. That was a nice defensive effort. There's Plummer trying to go deep. This is just great coverage, and we'll get a low shot of this. This is textbook. Herman O'Berry, uh, you can see, just nice job, good body position, looking back at the ball and playing the ball incomplete. So you get the ball back, you get three yards on first down, pick up the first down on a third down penalty, and then off goes Ricky Whittle. He goes the distance here, 67 yards for the touchdown, and then what he called the plunge, and that is not the dive, but the run, our play of the day. And the, hopefully the last time you'll see the plunge. <laughs> uh, what we did is we had a, a, a package. We are going to run strong side run, sprint out pass, or counter, depending on what they were in, Todd. And we changed up uh, Coach Greatwood and the offensive coaches did a nice job. We changed the way we blocked the counter. When we normally pull the off guard and tackle, this week we used uh, Mark Gregg to come back and get the key kick out block and pulled the tackle up through for the linebacker, uh, which gave us a very uh, a good uh, seal on, on, on the play. And our center, uh, who actually did a nice job pulling out here, Mark Gregg, helped here first, and then pulled out and kicked out on the end man. Harden pulled through and got the linebacker. Uh, Willie Rife came down and got the off linebacker. Uh, we did a good job right here with Baldwin sealing this. And there was a big running hole, which you saw. The receivers did a nice job blocking downfield. And when Ricky came through, all he saw was wide open field. Let's look at it again. You can see Mark Gregg. Well, you couldn't see it from that ground level. There's Harden pulling out big 77. Nice to have him back and healthy and have an opportunity to start his last game at Austin Stadium. Uh, after suffering the uh, leg injury against USC. And uh, this is uncalled for, Todd. We, we do not appreciate this by Ricky Whittle, and he has been told that. Uh, this is a team sport, and we don't want to bring that kind of individual attention to anybody. So the point after is good, 80 yards and three plays. This was a game where your offense came up with big plays. Well, plus that gave us a 15-yard penalty, and we had to kick off from the 20-yard line, which is no good deal. Nice job here by Rich Rule coming through, backside on the counter. Chad Cota coming through and slipping, uh, forcing it back in, and Rule and Cota combined for the tackle. But on third and 10, this is Plummer. Dangerous steps up, hits Keith Poole on the reception and a first down for ASU. A couple plays later, it's third and seven, and here's, we call him the snake for good reason. He is able to He's slither slippery. away. He's slippery. He really is. Those are the type of plays that we've worried about all, all uh, week long. And a great play by Alex Molden. He's beat by about a step. Uh, McCoy goes up to make the catch, and he just knocked it out of there. And a nice job on the screen pass, the swing pass there by Kenny Wheaton and Salila Malafiai. They miss a field goal, but get the ball back. This is near the end of the first oh, quarter. we got to recover that ball. <laughs> nice job by uh, Alex ripping it out and causing the fumble. Uh, but we don't recover it. And on the final play of the first quarter, Farlow is dropped for a five-yard loss. Bryant Jackson, nice play. You see, here he comes, just busts through, takes the Arizona State guard into the backfield, grabs hold and holds on. Gets a lot of help from the rest of the gang green defense. So there it is, the final play of the first quarter. Oregon with the 67-yard touchdown run by Ricky Whittle. As we enter the second period of play, we pick it up with Arizona State having the football. Oregon was unable to move it. Now the Sun Devils in trouble as well. Plummer back to pass. This was a great series right here, three and out. Troy Bailey uh, coming in, getting a sack. Uh, it's been a while since he's added to his team leading total of tackle for lost yardage, but here he had that opportunity. Salila Malafiai runs by, forced him up, and. A nice job by Troy Bailey getting the sack. And there's Rich Rule, who I mentioned earlier, played a great game. On the trap play, slips through, Malapii forcing it inside, Rule there to make the stop. And gets help from Jeremy Asher. And then on third and 18, going the wrong way in this series. 
Asher on a blitz with help from Troy well, Bailey. Help from Troy Bailey. Nice job on the blitz again. This time Asher breaks through. See him come through right there, spin him around, and Bailey finishes it off. So three consecutive plays with lost yardage for Arizona State, and you get good field position. Annie O'Neill on second and seven hits Patrick Johnson, gain of 10. Nice job, kind of a half roll here. Uh, nice job by Dino Filia clearing the passing lane. And Pat's getting better about coming back to the ball and running those routes. Uh, He's, uh, he's really progressing as a receiver. A first and ten. Back to Patrick. And he gets spun around. <laughs> Seven yard gain. Looked like a daddy long legs turning around, around there. And there's Marcel Stewart in on the uh, zone play. Breaking it up the middle. We get nice blocking at the point of attack. And Marcel comes through a big hole. Can't quite avoid the safety. He needs to try to run through that tackle try, rather than jump over it. And Belden out of a a double clutch hold there by Ryan Perry Smith uh, converts a, a big field goal for us. Gives you a 10 0 lead. So now Arizona State with the ball back, and here comes Plummer. Finds McCoy over the middle, a gain of 21 yards. Less than six minutes to go in the second quarter. This is a disappointing uh, job right here because we allowed Arizona State out of the short field or the long field. Oh, this is not the one. I'm sorry. It's the next, it's one. next one. Yeah, this is a nice play and 15 yards uh, on the Arizona State receiver for uh, kind of molesting Kenny after he made the interception. But uh, this is a, a nice job here by Kenny Wheaton. He's in sing single coverage. He's clearly got the man covered. The ball's overthrown. He makes a catch. Would like to have seen what would happen if he could have gotten away here. But once he's down, now this extra stuff is uh, not acceptable. Run the counter play, the same play we ran earlier for the touchdown, and Ricky Whittle breaks off a, a nice big run. You can see Mark Gregg right there, get the kick out block. We didn't get the tackle around, so Ricky just broke the tackle himself. Who needs blockers when you can run like that? So it's a first down, gets you out of the, you know, the uh, end zone area, and then O'Neill going deep here. So when I mentioned, uh, Pat just kind of short-armed that. He had him beat deep. Uh, he had several. He knew it, too. He just he wanted that touchdown so bad. And here's the big play uh, of the game. In, in my mind, uh, we give up a 42-yard run, a gaping hole. Uh, we had some people not do what they were supposed to do on that play. And uh, the resulting thing was a, a big game for Arizona State. Nice play there by Paul Jensen batting that ball down. And we get pressure up on Plummer. We miss a few tackles. And Rich Rule saves the touchdown right there. Saved four points. And a great play by O'Berry in the end zone. Nice play by Herman O'Berry. <laughs> and then Alex goes over him. <laughs> and we hold him to the field goal. This next series I thought was big for you. Near the end of the half, 57 seconds left. You get into the hurry up, but you don't panic. You run the ball a couple of times, mix in the pass as well. Same play right there that Ricky Whittle uh, broke for the touchdown. You'll see Mark Gregg, the center, watch him come out, 69, get number 90. Harden comes around, gets the linebacker. Great execution, good scheme, and uh, breaks Dino into the secondary. Josh Wilcox gets a nice block right in front, but we couldn't get away from the pursuing Arizona State defense. So you need to stop the clock real quick, get a couple of yards, the out pattern to McLemore. Then after a sack and a loss of two, third and eight. Big, big play here. Here's a big play, and uh, McLemore alertly gets out of bounds to stop the clock. A good pass protection here. Nice job by the line, and Danny steps up and throws a nice pass to McLemore. And he's trying to stick the ball out. I've just seen him dive out of bounds and protect the football. First and 10. Come back with the same play, counter play again, and pick up a nice game. Get a good ground level shot of this one. You can see this time we pull the guard, Eric Reed, and Harden comes and gets a good block. A little different defense that time. And uh, we pulled the guard instead of the center. Roughing the passer penalty also moved it 10 yards closer, and Belden came in. So you have answered Arizona State's late score with one of your own. Lead by 10 at the intermission. The third quarter as we pick up the play, Oregon leading 13 2 3. Arizona State to kick off. Teams uh, lately have been trying to do some different things on the kickoffs, and a nice job by Reinhardt here, getting his hands on the ball for maybe the first time this year. Yeah, I think. That's right. 
since we moved him to defense from tight end. Uh, but nice play by Matt, as you mentioned. Then an audible here, an opportunity audible by Danny O'Neill uh, recognizing the man coverage on uh, Wilcox. He audibles to uh, flag route. That's the same pass we threw for the touchdown against Arizona last week. So first drive of the third quarter. Ricky bouncing outside and cuts it back in. Did he ever go down there? I guess, I guess eventually, but I don't know that he's left anyone down there. I think he did time. either. Nice job on the counter play. Baldwin, this one we take outside because they closed real hard. Obviously, they talked about the counter play at halftime and wanted to close that play, pay, play off. So we took it outside instead of inside there. Nice hard run by Ricky Little. Gain of 13, second and 12 here. A quick screen to McLemore and uh, lowered his shoulder and picked up about three or four extra yards. We finally uh, come with a running play out of the gun. Uh, out of the shotgun, we run uh, the draw play for the first down. Second and 10. Right on the money and a touchdown. It's a nice route. Uh, McLemore's the inside receiver. He's going to run a flag route. The outside receiver is Ricketts. He's coming underneath. And we get isolated coverage uh, on McLemore. Two number ones out there. And uh, our number one comes up with six. There you go. That's a nice equation. The extra point is good. And now. You have a 20 to 3 lead. Arizona State is unable to move the ball of much as we pick up play. Both teams have had a couple of possessions in here. About nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Big play right there as they're in field goal range. Uh, Mark Schmidt's going to come off and get the blitz coming. It's picked up, but Mark Schmidt comes busting through for the sack. A little swing pass. And Danny Wheaton. Danny Wheaton doing it again. McClintock High in Arizona. He's played very well two weeks ago uh, in a row against Arizona Arizona State. He's played real good all season. He is something to watch. So you get it back after they have to punt it away. And we run the tackle trap with Willie Rife, come right back with the same play and uh, pick up the first down. On a third and six, your team was great on third downs in this game. Danny with some time just kind of lofts it out there for Patrick Johnson. This time he holds on and goes the distance. 67 yards. He said, look at me. I finally did it, huh? <laughs> uh, really a nice job by Danny here getting this up in the air where just as you can see the pass rush is starting to collapse in on him. Throws it up uh, real nice. And I noticed in the picture uh, in the paper this morning that one of the reasons Pat may be dropping those, and lucky he caught that, is his eyes are not following the ball to his hands. And uh, I hope that uh, this will be the first of many long touchdown passes for Pat Johnson. One senses that it will. So now you've broken the game open here. It's 27 to 3, but about three minutes to go in the third period. Again, pressure on Plummer, spins around. This one was almost picked. I thought we had a very dominant performance in the third quarter by uh, both phases of the game. I'm very, very surprised here that Arizona State accepted this penalty. We had lost about a yard on that play. We were going to punt it away. They took the 10 yards, and the resulting play is right here to McLemore. And I think the ankle is healing. And if he uh, tells me otherwise, he's in real trouble after watching him sprint <laughs> down the sideline there. It's a great job by Danny. Floating this over the short defender right there. McLemore makes a nice catch and turns it up the field. Gets a nice block by Pat Johnson. And another one by Damron Ricketts. It was unnecessary, but it was a deep cleater. So another big play by the offense. You've exploded in the third quarter with 21 unanswered points, and that is the end of the third period of play. Into the fourth quarter we go. Oregon has pretty much salted this one away. 34 to three. You uh, took uh, Danny O'Neill out of the lineup after the first play and Tony Graziani comes in and Tony says, I want a little action, maybe a few hits. And he picks up 11 yards. Yeah, I guess his ankle's okay now. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to get these guys healthy for the stretch run. It is. Uh, it's a nice job seeing the open area. Uh, gets to the first down and gets down. It's been a while since he's uh, taken a snap, obviously, and it's nice to have him back in the lineup. 
Ricky Whittle, Dave Cottrell out leading the block there. And this is a terrible spot. I mean, we have the first down, and they took about two yards away from us. The ball was fumbled out of bounds. Belden uh, pulls left, a 50-yard field goal. Had plenty of distance, but uh, missed wide left. And then Arizona State does get a touchdown here. McCoy, the pass interference penalty against Oregon. So that will be the final score. But we want to show you some of these uh, young guys getting some action, getting an opportunity to carry the ball, block, tackle. Mar Marcel Stewart, a uh, nice run. And a uh, nice job here on a sprint out pass by Tony, hitting Eric Wynn, young redshirt freshman from Beaverton, getting the first down. See it on the replay here. Uh, Dave Cottrell, Mike Clues in there. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, new faces. Kyle Strait is in at uh, the center position. So it's a first down, but the team had to punt it away, and now Arizona State gets it back. Brought in some of the first teamers on defense here. Disappointed about giving up that touchdown and didn't want to give Arizona State any further uh, chance of making a miraculous recovery. So Herman O'Berry comes in. Big hit right there by Herman for a yard loss. And Plummer is also still in the game. This one's batted down and almost picked. Asher almost had a pick. Uh, just as he had batted it up and hit the other hand, uh, one of those linemen got him. And great pressure there. Nice coverage by Isaac Walker. Incomplete. And now we get to get back on the offense, and Graziani comes out on the rollout again and hits Pat Johnson for the first down. Stewart gets five. And on a third and seven. Screen pass, and he should have cut this one back. Uh, and he went out of bounds, which is what we don't want to do in that situation. We want to keep the clock running. We got a little pass to Macklemore out in the flat on the quick screen. And same thing with Kristen. We, we need to have him stay in bounds on that play. Now Ryan Perry Smith comes in. This is a heck of a throw. And Eric Johansson gets his first career reception. Really pleased for Eric. Uh, nice job here, first of all. Uh, good job. Our tackle, David Weber, throwing the rusher by. Perry Smith steps up and throws extremely well. His first pass in, in a game and, and completed it. And Eric Johansson, who uh, has done a few place kicking things for us, uh, gets his first catch. And that's the last play as uh, Marcel Stewart breaks off about a 12-yard run. So, great, great victory over Arizona State, 34 to 10, the final score. Let's check some of the numbers. You can see Oregon with a season high, 28 first downs, season high in passing, 288 yards, a season high in total offense, 515. Turnovers, none for Oregon, one for ASU. Your team continues to lead the conference in that category. Penalties, ASU really hurt themselves in the first half with those uh, miscues. Third down conversions, excellent for Oregon. Nine of 16 and four sacks to throw in there as well. Individually, Danny O'Neill, 50%, 234 yards, but three touchdowns and his final pass at Autzen Stadium went for six points. Plummer, 20 of 34, 216, also one touchdown, one pick. Rushing, Ricky Whittle, his fifth career 100-yard game, 140 yards and the touchdown, Filia, and Stewart also chipped in with nice numbers as well. Receiving, McLemore led the way with seven for 121 yards, two touchdowns, Patrick Johnson with one score. And defensively, once again, great balance. Rich Rule and Jeremy Asher, the two inside backers, combined for 27 stops. Jeff Sherman, 11. Kenny Wheaton, another interception to go along with 11 tackles. Let's talk about uh, Stanford, the coach. Uh, this is a team that is... Uh, Put points on the board. They lead the conference in scoring, I believe. Steve Stenstrom goes down, their outstanding quarterback against Washington, and yet they didn't skip a beat. And Frost came in, a sophomore, hadn't played hardly at all, and he looked like uh, he was an All-American. Well, I, I tell you, he led him to three scores, uh, ran for 88 yards himself. Uh, a great athlete, uh, I think, uh, probably reminds uh, people of a, a guy like... Uh, young at the 49ers who can run and throw and do all those things and uh, I know that uh, Stanford had made some statements about wanting to get him some playing time I don't think they wanted to do it with an injury to Stenstrom and whether he'll be able to play or not I don't know but he's uh, supposedly has a broken finger a little finger on his passing hand and I would think it would be pretty difficult to throw the ball effectively with that uh, type of an injury 
Let's take a look at some of the highlights of Stanford against Washington, a game in which the Cardinal was victorious, 46 to 28. Stenstrom is in the game, and, but we do want to show you some of their running backs. That's Ethan Allen. They also have Justin Armour. He's, he's a load out there, wide receiver. Well, at six foot six, he's a, he's a problem for everybody. Uh, he blocks out the sun on most of the cornerbacks in this league, and uh, Stenstrom is pinpoint passes that make it very difficult to defend. Uh, against him unless you have somebody in front and back. The tight ends are a big factor as well. Uh, they have had uh, some of the top recruiting classes in the nation the last several years. And here's, a, I think, a true freshman, Bookman, who has the speed to go around the corner. Uh, I was extremely impressed at how they ran the football on Washington. We couldn't move the ball well on Washington at all, and Stanford just went up and down the field on them. Uh, I believe they lead our league in offense and scoring. And there's Frost. Uh, a very athletic, scrambling quarterback who's uh, from Nebraska uh, and, a, and a sophomore, outstanding player. So you can see the Cardinal definitely have a lot of offensive weapons. Defensively, they seem to be getting better, Coach. They struggled at the beginning of the year, but uh, week by week, they're playing so many true freshmen and young people defensively. You would just expect that Fred Von Oppen, their defensive coordinator, by the end of the year would have them playing pretty well, good. Well, there's no question. And, you know, I'm not so sure. Wasn't that... Eugene, Oregon, with all that rain coming down, <laughs> down there in the Bay Area at the, on the farm. Uh, we had a beautiful sunny day. Now, uh, Von Oppen uh, is, is an outstanding defensive coach, and he's been saddled with a lot of inexperience uh, uh, last year and this year after having a great year his first year uh, back there, and they uh, had a tremendous year in 10-2. and two. Uh, But it looks like to me they're coming together defensively. They have speed. They have athletic ability. They are inexperienced, but Fred Von Oppen always comes up with uh, intricate schemes to, uh, to give you all kinds of problems. You look at this game, Coach, you're back out onto the road for the first time in five weeks yeah. after a great homestand, a homestand that I think gave your team a lot of confidence. Uh, certainly you played well throughout most of that homestand as well, uh, but you do have to go on the road, and that's a different situation. No question it's different. It's always difficult to win on the road, and particularly in this league. Uh, we're, if, if we want to accomplish what we want to accomplish and get to 6-1, and one, we're going to have to win a game on the road at Stanford and then try to go 7-1 and one with an on-the-road game at, at Oregon State. So uh, we don't have any choice. I've tried to have the conference, you know, give us the home games now, but they've, they've declined. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants no, to come no, here and play. <laughs> I don't think so now. The way our fans are cranking up, uh, it's been a great home stand, but now if we want to accomplish it, we got to get it done on the road, and that's a, a, something we're going to have to take the challenge on and go out and do it. All right, quickly, let's take a look at the other Pac-10 scores from Saturday. You see the victory by Oregon and the victory by Stanford. Flip the page, a big one in Pullman, USC, also now tied for the conference lead along with Arizona. Those three teams, Oregon, Arizona, and USC, all are 5-1. and one. Oregon State, a non-conference win over Pacific. UCLA had the week off. Now we check the standings. And here is what things are right now. Five and one for the top three teams, and Washington State in a bit of trouble at four and two. The schedule is real important this week, Oregon on the road, and the biggie at the Coliseum is Arizona at USC. So at the end of this week, 